Chuck Bomarito sticker outside Screwball and there's Mr. Wildman just above him. They're both out in California so you know have a little pity on them. Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, today I'm going to do something I've been thinking about for a while. Uh, you know in a previous video I guess I guess it might have been last year. I don't know when it was. But anyway, I, you know, I made a gear. It was a kind of long, drawn-out project because I had to make uh, a tail stock for my rotary table. I had to buy a rotary table in the first place to get, you know, to need the tail stock. And then when I made the tail stock, I had to decide whether to make it like most of them. Most of them are like an upside-down T and they're adjustable, you know, slotted on the top so you can move your center up and down and so I had to decide whether to do that or why to get really you know maybe I just get really accurate and, and drill and thread the thing just as one piece and I decided it would be simpler and easier just to drill it as one piece and then I made a gear I wasn't very you know swift about it and, and my uh, little thing to hold the gear was a little wobbly and all that sort of thing but the gear worked and since then I've been thinking about it I'd like to make some more gears so that's what I'm going to do today I'm going to make uh, some more gears and I've got a, a thing in mind to do with those gears I want to gear something down I got something that's already geared down I want to gear it down some more just to, to play with it and see what it can do you know I'm not going to get too, too big mouth right now and tell you anything else I should have got started on this earlier today, but I went to the range and went through a 325 round box of ammo, which is something I've been doing just about every day or every other day for the past couple of weeks. And I'm going to have to buy some more ammo. But anyway, uh, after that, the boss lady wanted to go to, to the Chinese restaurant there, Buffet, King Bo, I mean not King Bo, King Buffet. And uh, and I overloaded there. I, I stuffed out until my six pack turned into a case and the case turned into a truckload. And, you know, I thought I was going to die. I had to take about an hour and a half nap. And, uh, and I'm still kind of stuffed right now. And that's been, oh, nearly three hours ago, you know. So anyway, we're still going to make a start on doing the gears and the way I've got them figured out is I copied this spreadsheet from Keith Rucker. Now he didn't finish up a couple little parts of it and so I looked at some other stuff, Mr. Pete and some other guys and I I stuck some guesses in there for the formulas that he did, didn't did really complete, you know, but he'd, he'd just put them in there by hand. So anyway I laid out several of them here, different, different sizes of gears. Here's a uh, 14 teeth, here's 20 teeth, and all the way up to uh, 50 tooth gears. I'm going to make two of them. So I'm going to start with one of them that's about an inch in diameter, which I think that's the 14 tooth. Let me look here. Yeah, 14 tooth gears an inch in diameter. I'm, so I'm going to start with that, then I'm going to try to make a 50 tooth gear if I've got a big enough piece of stock. It'll be like three and a quarter inches in diameter. Or I may do a 45 tooth gear, which is a little, just a few thousandths under three inches. That's most likely what we're going to do. And uh, then we'll build a little framework so these gears can connect with each other to do a job. I'm not going to get a big mouth and tell you what it is right now, but uh, <laughs> we're going to work on it, all right? So first thing first is to start on the bandsaw cutting off material to make these gears and I'm going to make them with a little shaft sticking out the side of them so that they can be supported easier at least one of them, the small one and uh, we'll go from there <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting a little horse or is it a little horse? not sure, alright anyway let's get on with it token shot every project starts here like that. I'm going to make the gears from aluminum so to cut fast and 
easy. Yeah, I'm probably going to just use them one time. They may not even survive the first use if they turn out right in the first place. And I can see you probably looking at that, and that's a wide gear. No, it's going to be a half inch gear with about three quarters of an inch of stick out on either side for, for a shaft. One side of it will go on the motor shaft and the other side will go on a piece of metal bracket to hold it up so that it doesn't flop around in the breeze. So, way to go. Adam Booth often mentions using the little circles here on the chuck when he chucks things up to uh, pre-adjust his chuck jaws. Well, rednecks can do that too. You don't have to be a expert Floridian machinist to to look at the little circles and I know I'm no Adam Booth but I want to show you how wonderful this came out. I'm going to move you over here so that you can see this thing from the side and I'm going to turn it on. I haven't put a dial indicator on it yet that's just from chucking it up. Is that alright Chuck? What do you think? Did I chuck it right? Okay, I'll get a dial indicator and I'll make sure that it's in close because I don't have much, you know, three or four thousandths to lose here. I cheated a little bit and cut some of it off without you guys watching. But I think you'll get over that, I hope. Alright, so. That's about two... 2.940 from my way of reckoning. See if I can get it loose from there and show it to you. 2.950 if that's focused. I don't know. I can't tell. But anyway, a couple more thousandths and uh, I'm at 2.938, which is what my spread sheet says it's got to be for a, the almost three inch here. This will be 45 teeth. So we'll cut off two more thousands. I think this week I'm going to want to make a uh, a little magnetic mount for the 360 degree camera so I can stick it on top of my truck and take a little ride with it just to see if I can get some interesting video alright this is 5 8 I can I can bore an eighth of an inch out of there without feeling like I'm working too hard. So what we're going to do is just stop with this drill, set up a boring bar, and go after it. I think I got this at the heart. So my boring bar was still in the boring tool holder. And what we're going to do, we're going to bore this thing to hopefully a thousand thunder three quarters of an inch. And uh, <laughs> hopefully that'll make it fit nice and tight on that mandrel. Alright, I lied to you guys. I didn't come back yesterday like I said I would. I took the day off and did other stuff. So, anyway, I'm here now, and I'll just carry on as if I'd been here yesterday. I'm going to bore this thing out. Got a good stiff boring bar here. I'm going to try to take it to like uh, 0.748, you know.
I'm going to give this little piece as if you guys haven't seen this and don't know what I'm doing. But this is a snap gauge. When you loosen the little screw at the end here, it lets the, these pieces come out. Okay? So, what you do to measure something, you start with the pieces, you know, pushed back inside. You stick them in this hole at an angle. You see, this is at an angle. Tighten it down so they're sticking out. Now, they're bigger than the hole. So when you bring it across the center like that, it'll force the stuff into the same size as the hole. It'll center it and bring it into the same size as the hole. Then when you want to measure it, just stick it in your micrometer and you got it. That's uh, 678 thousandths. So we're still on the way up. My last measurement there was 740, uh, 747, and I want to do maybe a loose 748, so I'm going to make a spring pass and see if that doesn't take out enough to make it fit. That's a couple of tenths under 750. So, let's just try it and see. That's right on top of fitting. It starts in there pretty good, so then it comes out the other side a little bit. So I think that'll do the job. If I want to make it fit a little tighter, all I got to do is warm this thing up some and just slide it on there. Well, I was going to park the thing off, and then I thought, no, that's just wasting metal. I'll probably not use this gear but the one time. And then if I, if I leave the metal there, I can make something else out of it, you know. So, I'm going to change chucks and uh, set the thing up with the three jaws so that I can just put my little homemade center in it. And then I'll put a center in the tailstock and I'll just cut down the, the, the excess stuff a little bit. Set it down about you know, a quarter of an inch or so. So all I gotta do is just mark this little bigger. Right there. Now if you think you see this thing hopping around, it's this part that was in the chuck and didn't get trued up when I was doing the other part of it. So that, that's what was hopping around. So I've got a wide spot here. And the reason I used this is it was all I had. Alright, so I took the one inch piece we had and I chucked it up here and I got it where there was no run out at all. Switch back to the four jaw chuck. And uh, it says to use a 29 64th, no, it says to use a 17 64th drill bit, which I don't think I have, but I had a H drill bit, which is really within a couple of thousandths of that size. So I'm going to thread this with an 8 millimeter by uh, 1.25. I got this happy face, uh, yeah, happy face camera holder. I'm going to make something for the 360 degree camera. Then we'll get back to this. Yep, I screwed some high powered magnets on this thing. Looky there. Hold on to your hat. All right, take a look at this. 
redneck camera car. Yeah, get a bite of that, Google. <laughs> we we're going to go traveling around and see some Texas back roads in style. Alright, this is the gear cutter for the small gear. If you look at it, it's, it says diametral pitch 16, pressure angle 14 and a half degrees. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's hard to read this stuff. And then you come around to here, and it says uh, it's a number 2. This number is kind of backwards on some sets for others. And in, in the uh, machinery handbook, this would, I think, be like number seven you know or something like that but anyway that doesn't mean anything which number it is this is what matters here is the teeth that it cuts this one cut 14 to 16 so that's how many teeth per inch I don't know if like I said I don't know if you can see the writing or not I think you can maybe see it there so there you are. <clears throat> I've already got the other mandrel. I mean, the other the other cutter is on the on the arbor. It's going to hold it, and it cuts 35 to 54 teeth. So we're going to cut 45 teeth over there, and that's sort of halfway in the scale. So let me go ahead and get the the rotor table and everything set up, and we'll come right back. Now this is some free information you can get online from Boston Gear. You can get it as a PDF and it's got all the formulas you need to calculate gear sizes and all that sort of, all the different parts you need to calculate about a gear. They've got it here. So uh, go and download that if you're, if you're going to plan on cutting gears and you need the information. All right, it's time for the final setting up of everything, and this comes with my rotary table. This uh, this came out of a PDF. I printed it from it, but it's got a chart here. You pick out how many teeth, and and it tell you if you use A plate or B plate, uh, how many turns and how many holes, and it saves me a lot of math, which I'm not really crazy about. So. I've got those files saved in two or three different places on electronic devices so that when one crashes, well, I'll still have it on the other. Anyway, that's what we're up to now. We're going to set up the uh, rotary table and get everything lined up and cut a gear. All right, so according to this chart for the 14 tooth gear, we can use plate A or B. And... Uh, since plate A has 28 uh, holes in it, we're going to use plate A, turn it 6 turns, and then 12 holes. But the first gear I'm going to cut is the gear with 45 teeth. I think you can see that there, 45 teeth. Doesn't tell you to use any particular plate because the, uh, the rate gear ratio here is 90 to 1. So you divide 90 by 45, you get 2. So you just turn the crank two turns. That's all you got to do right there. I don't know if you were able to read the one over here on the uh, <laughs> 14 tooth, but this makes it very simple. Just pick up this little chart, how many teeth you want to cut. It tells you which of the two plates to use, and you go at it. So I still got to do some more setting of the cutter and all that, and then I'll be right back with you. All right, I've got this piece of paper, measure four thousandths of an inch thick. I'm going to drop this cutter right down on top of it, uh, on top of the gear here. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to move that bracket out of the way. Uh, you know, the, uh, the dog. I'm going to move the dog that I've got things clamped down with, get him out of my way. thing here wanted to move I've got to clamp him down some. Yeah. I'll have to work on that in a second. But anyway we can get the height we can get the height right. Okay. 
So, I'm going to let this cutter down right on top of this gear, or gear blank, whatever it might be, however you want to name it. It's already close. And I'm going to ease the thing down until, until it grabs hold of the paper and I can't get the paper out no more. And then I'll know that I, there we are. We're within 4,000th, right there. I'll lock it, zero the uh, Z <coughs> or the Z axis, whichever you like to call it, right there. I'm going to back that off of it and get my paper out. So if I come down here to where it's, uh, and I can feel it touch there. So, and that that looks right on the uh, on the DRO. So I zeroed it at that spot. Now this thing's two hundred thousand thick. Actually, more like a hundred and ninety seven or hundred ninety eight, something like that. So I'll go down the appropriate amount one more time to, and then reset the zero so we'll come down there's 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 i'll kind of come down about 98 thousandths so i think that should uh, be a good zero spot i'm going to look i've got it written down over there so y'all hang out it was actually 198 thousandths i just took the micrometer to it and uh, so I dropped it down to a good spot there 2,000 short 99,000 now then all I have to do is to measure this guy and go down that much half of that and I should be on the center line so while you rest I'll go get a bigger micrometer and refresh my memory of how large that is all right, I want to come down 1.470, and that will be on the spot. So, we we'll go down. Whoa, I'm awfully close there, and this thing's interfering. Ah, uh, heh. <laughs> Look at that, that little nut's going to interfere. So, I got to do something about that. May have to move to the other side of the gear to cut it. So, you guys hang loose while I figure it out. Alright, I removed the nut off the bottom of that uh, little indicator rod. And now I got it to drop down to 1.4697. I could have made it even, but uh, what the heck. My calculator took it out that far, so why not? All right, so next job, now that I've got it there, is to sneak up close enough to it that I'm just almost touching it so that I can set the Y dimension so that uh, I'll know how deep to cut the little bubble. So you guys are in the way, so I'll have to turn you off and move you for a minute. I'll get you a strategic spot again in a minute. All right, I used that same little piece of paper to tell me when I was within four thousandths there. And then I eased it up that last four thousandths and then I saw it th throw a tiny little shiny chip. And there's a little shiny mark on it as I go by it. So I know that that's where to zero the Y axis. So now I've got to go back and look at my... Uh, at my chart there, the one that I printed out from the spreadsheet, and see how deep I want to cut this thread. I uh, mean thread. This tooth, gear tooth. Hang on. Alright, according to what I've written down, I want to go in point one three seven. So I'm not going to cut that deep the first time around. I'm going to come in about one point one two five. And we'll call that good, and then we'll we'll cut the teeth, and then I'll come back and take the rest of it off in a in a light cut, it's about ten thousandths. So 
Here we go. I think, I think climb milling from there on the finish, I'm not going to climb mill on the start, but I'm going to climb mill on the finish, and I think that'll work out. So, now to find a good spot for you guys to park for the duration, so hang on. I can't get you a lot closer without sticking you in the gear teeth, so there we go. We're going to try that, and I'll make sure that my handle is set right over here. So, hang on, I gotta make double sure that my handle is set right and all that sort of thing. Alright, as I said, I don't need the little plate on there or the segment arms or the, you know, that stuff. But I went ahead and put it on because I'll need it for the smaller gear. And there's nothing like being already set up. So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna crank this thing up, make a cut across it, move back. Turn the uh, rotary table to crank two turns, lock it down, do the same thing over again. We're going to do this just, you know, all the way around, 45 times. And you guys are going to watch a few of the times, then I'm going to turn the camera off. Because, you know, seeing 45 of the same thing can get really boring. to have a little bit of lubrication on there so when I back it back I'll go get my uh, little squirt bottle. marker there showing which tooth to be on. Lock the little hooker back down. Move you guys around and you can watch the next tooth being cut. Alright, I'll move you down a little. Okay, this is the last pass do the first turn around it. I left myself 10 thousands to go back and cut out just uh, so I can make sure I got a really good cut. Well, here we go. This is the last one of the first cut. I, it occurred to me I didn't adequately explain what we're doing on this one. This is the 14 tooth gear and it takes the A plate and the 28 hole circle and it tells me that uh, I'm going to turn the crank 6 turns and 12 holes out of the 28. So I have two plates that uh, come with this thing but they're like four plates because 
they've got holes on one side and they've got holes on the other side <coughs> so we're going to roll this thing over to the opposite side of what I was looking at there before and we're going to find the 28 hole line and that's it right there right there 28 holes and we're going to put a mark there or I've already got a mark here but I'm going to clean it off put a brand new one and I'm going to set it up and crank it around to get the, the right holes. Now I'll need the segments. The segments go, you know, on here and I'll have to spread them out to keep track of that 12 holes for me. Alright, let's cut a gear. starting on the gearbox to make these steps for a relative and so it's been this is the third day <laughs> I the first day I spent consulting with a relative and then hauling the materials over here and I got a little bit of a start that day but I did other stuff in the backyard you know with a with a chipper and such and so I got started on too late to do anything the next day I finished building the steps and then today, that was the boss lady's day, and we went to, uh, to Galveston. So now I've got to move these things out of here so that I can get back on the, uh, back on the gears tomorrow. So anyway, this is why some of my projects take so long. Is things come up in the middle. So, and then when I get back on the project, sometimes I don't know where I was at. <laughs> but I'll know this time. All right, we got gears, so next thing is a uh, gearbox, and I figured I'll put the gears in this for a gearbox, but that'll be in the next exciting episode, so I had a lot of witty things to say at the end here, and now that I've got the camera on, I don't remember one of them, so you all uh, hang around for the joke and keep on keeping on. Well, in this uh, this area of town where where Bubba lives, they got a hunting club, and it's where all the you know the local elites hang out, you know, and folks folks that are you know up in society. And uh, so one day, one of the members there, uh, Colonel Sanders, he was showing this new guy around, and he says, he says, you you see that old man over there asleep at the fireplace? He said, that's Coder. He says he. He's our oldest member, and he can really tell you some hunting stories you'd never forget. So they went over and woke up Cooter, you know, and wanted him to tell him a hunting story. And uh, Cooter says, well, he says, I remember back in 44, was over there in Africa, you know, on a lion hunt. And uh, I, I reckon we'd been walking around for about three days, maybe four. And he says, we was getting awful tired and we was hungry and everything. He says, now come up this old tree land on the ground. He says, I was so tired I needed to, you know, stop and take a break. And he said, I laid my gun up on that tree and I laid down and rested my head on that tree. And he says, I, I fell asleep. He said, I don't know how long I was asleep. But he says, I woke up hearing something rustling around out in the grass. He says, so I was reaching over to get my gun. He says, and right then, it's the biggest lion you ever seen come jumping out and roar. He says, I pooped my pants. A young guy there was with Colonel Sanders. He said, well, I don't blame you. Big old lion jumped out and roared at me. He said, I'd poop my pants too. And uh, Cooter says, no. He says, I mean, just now when I said roar. 
Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.